I hit this button, uh -huh. boom, the whole program's gonna start. Okay, well hit it. All right. Now, something completely different. What's up? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Happy, and I am currently walking around this parking lot of this Kava bar I go to because my normal microphone and my equipment was acting up today. So this is quite the unique podcast. On the show right now, the internet's favorite Tom Myers is on Happy Hour. What's up, bro? The internet. Oh man. Well, listen, Ryan. Uh, thanks so much for uh, thanks so much for having me on. I, I got to I got to say when I was promoting this episode that uh, you, you're uh, sort of an OG fan. Like you were one of my, you were one of the first ones to hop on the, uh, on the Tom Myers. Yeah. Bandwagon. Well, I remember I was a fan of, uh, Mickey, Amelia and Spiegel back on 98 rock in Baltimore. And I was looking up like one of Mickey's videos, like in 2012. And there was one of him saying how Tom Myers is like the worst comedian ever. So uh -huh. then I was like, who is this Tom Myers guy? So then back then you had a website and then I messaged you on Facebook and I interviewed you like 12 years ago. And it was probably my worst interview, not because of you, but because I hadn't began my like <laughs> speech classes. So I couldn't get a word out. And then like seven years ago, when you asked for the audio, I was like, really, you want that? But uh, it's been a long journey, Tom. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, things things haven't changed. I still have uh, I, I still have the tractors. It's just uh, I, my my format's a lot larger now. I can I can reach. Yeah. I can reach more. I can. Well, we both can reach more people. I mean, we're both as uh, as is want to happen in these situations. We're both doing you know sig significantly better. At least it, it sounds like you. Yeah. Are, right? Oh yeah. I know everything's great, man. I just always stay humble because, like, man, I was like on top of the world last week and feeling absolutely amazing. And my electricity, or not my electricity, my air conditioning has been off the last week at my apartment. And I live in Florida where it's ninety seven now. So I've been Ooh. sleeping at this girl's house. I'm not trying to brag. I'm saying like all these accomplishments are cool, but like whenever I get really cocky about an accomplishment, that's when things go to crap. And last week I was kind of on that vibe and now I don't have air conditioning and it's very hot out. So I'm always like really focused on like being in the now, if you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've had accomplishments in radio, but I'm not at those jobs anymore. So I'm just really big on the present moment. Cause I noticed so many people, Tom, people like live in the past online and it's just like, you're literally wasting your final years by like talking about the nineties, man. It's, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. This whole internet where everything's gone. Think about when we were talking 12 years ago, Tom, all the internet was, was like Gangnam style. And now it's a bunch of like midlife crisis comedians yelling at each other. It, this whole world has gone to crap. Well, as a uh, as a midlife crisis comedian who likes to yell at people, uh, yeah, I, I would say if you being down on your luck is sleeping at a woman's apartment when it's incredibly hot out, but you are living like a, a charmed life, like oh, ju man. just just hearing you just hearing you mention that if, is if, the most, I, is, I know if if only you felt my my mental illness at all times of being bipolar, everything appears to be amazing on the front, sort of like Pete Davidson where Pete Davidson yeah. appears to be this guy who gets every girl or whatever, and he's super famous. He's like incredibly messed up and has borderline personality disorder and fights through it. I have bipolar. So I've always related to Pete where everyone's like, oh my God, I want to be Pete. Because I've had all these people like over the years ask me for advice. And I've, I have fans and they act like, oh, life is so amazing for Ryan Hoppy. I'm like, it is, but I have the same problems as everybody else. I mean, well, I just... uh I'm just trying to be humble now in life, Tom. You know what I mean? Because I, you think about like where creativity was the past 15 years. It was everybody pounding their chest about how amazing they are. And now people's real talent is being seen throughout the years. So a lot of the people that spent 15 years pounding their chest, they're freaking out because they're like, man, I'm about to be 50. Comedy or radio didn't go the way I, I wanted it to go. So I want to ruin it on others. It's this like weird internet culture and it goes for every job like i uh i'm in these like facebook groups for like king of the hill american dad like these nerdy groups that post memes all day 
with the cartoons I grew up watching and people will be arguing on there, just like freaking out with each other. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you're just a bunch of anonymous trolls. One's in Omaha, Nebraska. One's in Rochester, New York. And just yelling at each other. I'm like, I don't know. I just look at a lot of old footage, Tom, of stuff even from 20 years ago, like your legendary set on TV. And I just go, it's, it's really crazy how everything's changed in 15 years. Well, yeah. I mean, well, first off, that talk of you being with a woman is the most action I've gotten in six months. So, oh wow, so so got to get on Bumble. Thank Tom. you for that. Yeah, we we got <laughs> we, we got to get you a Bumble, Tom. Bumble and Tinder and Hinge. Or I, I apparently I could just I could just come down to Florida. Like I don't I don't need any apps. I just need my uh, Southwest Rewards app. Yeah, but but touching on what you were saying earlier, I mean, I think. You know, just what you see with various comedians. I mean, you do in order to do what we do, um, like comedians especially, and like radio people, maybe to a, a lesser extent. It, you have to have some kind of you, you have to have something wrong with you. I, I've come to this conclusion. Yes, of course. The entertainment, the entertainment industry, is a is a mental illness, and people who want to be a part of it are mentally ill. The I just relative, raised my hand, Tom. <laughs> the relatively healthy people uh, are the ones, like, I think you and me, like, who can admit it. Yeah, like, we're incredibly, can I curse on here? Yeah, say whatever the fuck you want, Tom. Yeah, fuck yeah. We are incredibly fucked up people. We have our own shit to deal with. And, uh, you know, it's, you don't want to say that that's just how it is, but, uh yeah that, that that is how it that is how it is yeah so like for me tom i grew up i loved opie and anthony the t-man show eddie and jovo howard stern there's all these radio shows that I grew up listening to that wanted me to go into radio like not that they wanted me but like they influenced me to go into radio and podcasting and there's about 20 other radio shows i like like i'm a huge radio geek but what i'm asking you tom is like did you always want to go into comedy when you were like growing up? Were there like a lot of comedians you really wanted to be? How did you get into comedy? I mean, I never really wanted to get into stand up until like fairly. I mean, I've always been fascinated by it. Like I've always, I've always grown up with it. My family's always just enjoyed, enjoyed watching like, humorous stuff on, on TV or buying, uh, uh, albums like the uh, I, I used to grow up uh when i was growing up i used to listen to like, my parents bill cosby vinyls smothers brothers vinyls uh tom lehrer uh, i don't know if he's still around he's kind of dropped off the, the face of the earth but i used to love listening to him and i've always been enthralled by the idea of being the center of attention again touching on that <laughs> touching on that mental illness thing i believe everything i say is important and lots of people should listen to me it's sort of where it uh where where it came in i i started taking drama classes and in high school i got into some theater stuff and gradually made the transition to uh made the transition from doing like Im improvisational stuff to uh to to stand up i just that was just sort of a gradual process for me because i wanted to try to do something on my own um uh, where i i have more i have more control yeah. and i i i love it man i mean it's I'm, I'm not really doing it as much because i don't know if you can hear over the audio i have a come on up here well I'll, i don't know if you can well for the uh audio people well that you follow yeah. my facebook you can see it there's a I have a uh, aging cat who requires a lot of my attention, so I don't. I don't aging really cats are the most depressing things ever because oh aging God, cats yeah. are the same as as they become the same as like kittens because they need your help. And it's just uh, I'm a big cat person, so I got a vasectomy because I don't ever want kids. So my cat uh, Luna, who's six years old, going to be seven next month. Aww. She's always kind of been like my kid. Cause I had to save her life in 2020 because she got out of my house during like a storm and went under my house and like ate a lizard. So I had to begin to go fund me and my listeners got me the money or whatever, but it was the scariest thing. And yeah, I, I don't know. Like it's crazy how attached you can get to a pet. Like uh, last week I was um, hunkering down 
at my friend's house for the hurricane and uh i brought my cat and my cat just begins hissing at the cat's house that we're visiting so my friend's cat's name is chloe and luna my cat was like hissing at chloe and i was like you're at somebody else's place right now like this isn't our apartment and you're making me look bad by like hissing at the cat like as if there's something wrong with you and then like she was like meowing the whole night because she was afraid of the hurricane she's like no no oh like, yeah over and well, over you, you took, time you, all night it was like seven hours you were taking her out of her uh in environment they they are yeah. in charge you are yes, not are. doing what you're supposed to be doing that is the 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 that you broke the cardinal cat sin <laughs> yeah i really did but what am i supposed to do have her drown at the apartment you know no water came to my place but you got to take yeah. care of her man i i don't know as vicious as some of the trolls can be like you're yeah, a fuck that cat about all the so you probably... about the trolls told her <laughs> a bunch of recovering high school bullies that finally have this huge boner to make fun of others because they graduated high school in the 70s and 80s so for about 25 years there was no social media so they have all this repressed bully energy and now they're living out all their midlife crises online yelling at people and i'm not even talking about you yelling i just see people yelling all the time because like, a bunch of maniacs like it's just like a certain troll i notice a troll is never somebody that has a public profile or of somebody that has kids that's public it's always like a private account and it's got like um the punisher's logo as like the uh profiles picture for that account and then it's like like trump then it's like guns free speech and it's always like those dudes and you're just like bro like or it's like a truck up, or like, something it's a pickup yeah, truck is the yeah logo. well because yeah. they're all imbeciles and here's why it's because they don't mind dishing out insults trolls will type out 20 things about you that are not true but if you call out anything of their heroes or of their character they're narcissists so they go no i can only make fun of somebody i can't be made fun of it's a two-way street man well it's also a lot of self-projection i've noticed because then oh yeah they, uh, people will, will come after me they'll they'll say some stuff and then i go ahead and clap back and then someone you don't clap back tom you should be just harding all the comments i'll get the most vicious things on my youtube you fucking suck you're never gonna make it in radio you're a loser I'll, I'll, the, the worst shit and i'll leave it up and i give it a heart and sometimes they comment underneath the youtube comment and they're like well well uh why did you like the comment and i give that a comment because i'm not gonna waste my day thinking about something because like if you look at other fan pages like if you go on any like old opie and anthony or ron and fed's youtube page or howard stern it's a bunch of trolls it'll be like the comment will be like greg opie hughes is overrated and then under it is like 50 comments and people are debating back and forth about a radio show from 11 years ago or like people debating about like michael jordan versus lebron it's like they're not they could have never played in the same era i people just argue all the time tom everywhere and, i go everyone's arguing and i'm like it's really pointless because the thing i find so dumb about debates and arguing is i don't think anyone's ever gone oh i'm gonna vote for this person or oh you changed my mind then i view things differently it's all people's ego they just want to say things all day that's why people talk about politics the last eight years is they think it like makes them sound smart but it's like no it's it's all nonsense tom i'm very curious to see how this year is gonna end uh i mean this has been the weirdest year ever because it's felt like 10 years and it's also gone by in like two weeks it's really weird yeah i mean it's i think i think COVID had a little something to do with that because it, everything seemed to everything seemed to to some people it seemed to go by real slow like it did for me it, it seemed to anyway and then all of a sudden boom it's 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 2024 and yeah. it, it, it was just all of a sudden it was something along the lines of how like you you're watching a video online like it starts to lag and then in the time that your video lag because your the memory on your computer or your it was messed up you, yeah uh, it it's it it just rushes to go ahead and catch up to the point where it's uh, where it's supposed to be i don't know what that phenomenon's called i'm a i'm a 
smart ass comedian slash podcaster. I I'm a technical idiot, but um, but that 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 seems to be what it's it it's felt like. And a lot of what I've noticed is some of the more unsavory elements of society seem to have megaphones and they can go on and sort of espouse their views and, and opinions. And basically what you said, criticizing um, like Opie and Anthony and, and Howard Stern, like you're essentially you're shitting on people who the reason they're doing what they're doing is because they are sitting on a shit ton of money and could honestly give a rat's ass basically. Oh, for sure. Why would they? And this goes for any job. Like if you think about athletes from back in the day or anything, people debate professional athletes, actors, directors, athletes. I mean, why should they care about what we think? You know, they're living their life. That's what I've always never gotten is when these like celebrities clap back, like Cardi B replies to a troll or whatever. I'm like, you're literally the time you're given on earth. You're arguing with some dude who's in his living room. Like, what do you like? They're like in the news headlines. Cause I cover the celebrity news on my show and it'll be like Lizzo claps back at hater or Chrissy Teigen claps back at hater. And it's like, well, why you're literally giving them what they want. You're not really proving the situation wrong. I mean, I used to argue with people all the time online and now half the time I used to post something that would get 70 comments where I would offend people. And I look at some of it from like two, three years ago. I was like, what was I so mad about? Like, I only post my show now. Like, I keep a really low key lifetime because, I mean, you have to. Like, when you're putting your shit online, you can make anybody make it really easy to look up info about you because you're already online. Yeah. So, especially nowadays, and I'm being dead serious. Like, if you're doing a podcast and you start getting like a lot of listeners, and then people want to like know where you live and shit. Like you always got to like protect yourself from that. So that's why I don't really post pictures of myself anymore online. It's just because the trolls can be creepy. So no, but of course. Enough yeah. about the uh, but enough about the uh, trolls. We've given them plenty of their time. What is your plan? <laughs> what is your plan for your next like stand up special? Like when are we going to see Tom Myers on like Tubi? Oh well, I mean I. Like I said, I've been I've been taking like a little bit of a break from going on the road because I don't like to be away from the uh, the aging cat for too long, especially oh, yeah, since, for sure. Especially since he doesn't seem to remember where his litter box is. Some days, oh, that's not good. So, no. Yeah, I I don't want to come home and uh, from doing a week on the road, say, and walk into the uh and and walk into the the, the Grand Central Station of feline uh bodily matter oh so, yeah man no one wants that no one wakes up and goes i want to deal with that <laughs> but i mean i've been i've been writing but i've still been writing i've still been performing i've been doing yeah. these uh hybrid uh shows like these are part in studio part zoom shows with a uh with uh someone i've gotten to know over the last few years dat fan he won uh the first oh he's a good dude i've heard of that guy standing. yeah yeah well he runs this whole online and in person community of comedians from uh Los Angeles. I do his show like once sometimes oh, twice nice. a week. And it's just it's a great supportive room where you can try out you know, new stuff and it's one of those rooms where like it works because he has certain rules. Because with mm -hmm. with Zoom comedy during the pandemic, a lot of the times they would like, certain comedians, if they weren't performing, they just turn their cameras off and walk away and just go away from, uh, and, and, and go away from whatever they're supposed to be doing and not pay attention to the comedian on yeah. the screen with that fans shows. You have to be present. You have to stay the whole show. You have to keep your camera on, pay attention, not get distracted, do anything else. And out of the hundreds of comedians he has, he has, I think from like less than a hundred who still oh, wow. stick around from the time because they're, they're, they're committed to making the room work. The room is supportive and the format as a result works. So uh, as a result, I can't really, I can't credit him enough for yeah. helping me give me the boost. So I've been, I've been writing, I've been performing there. So I'm probably going to do put out one more album because I've already put out a few and yeah. then maybe I'll just stick with 
because I also with the podcasting because I also have a podcast. I have a couple other projects. Oh, nice! In in the works that I'm doing. So, it's like you know what I've done a lot of stuff. I've traveled. I've been to a lot of places. Have I done everything I wanted to do? No, but I, I've done a lot of. I've done a lot of cool stuff, and um. I'm I'm pretty satisfied with the with the body of work that I put out. Well, Tom, how can people find your work online? Um, you can find me in the street and uh, and hunt me down uh, with your yeah. your phone camera out and just yell questions at me. No, um, the website is tommyers.us, spelled M Y E R S. Uh, the podcast is called uh, Tom Myers versus the rest of the world. Yeah, it's it is available on my uh, Patreon. You can subscribe to that. You can get extended episodes, bonus clips. You can listen to the episodes ad free because you know I have bills to pay. And uh, it's also available on my YouTube channel with certain video segments because it's supposed it's usually an audio podcast. So certain yeah. segments I put online. So, oh, this makes sense. That kind of thing. And of course, it's available wherever you get your podcasts. I also have to shout out. Um, ipmnation.com they stream my show uh every thursday night at 10 eastern and odyssey radio which is a yeah. an online station based in where i live in harford county maryland nice and it uh, it airs mondays at 11 eastern so they give me they give me a platform to go ahead and stream on them so that's why they're always in the that's why they're always in the credits uh as well and also a special shout out to um uh detroit uh comedian a a ron he has an outfit oddly funny productions he sponsors yeah. he sponsors the podcast and also helps sponsor a uh a pickup online show like i do in the vein of uh, dat fan zoom shows i get a bunch that's of cool. comedians from around the country we perform you know just it's again it's one of these rooms where don't be afraid to fail. Like if you say something that like you accidentally, you know, might be kind of offensive or whatnot, it's, 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 it's a judgment free zone. Don't uh, go. As long as you're not being, you know, an asshole about it, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, it's, 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 I, I, I try to create, uh, I, I create fun vibes at least, you know, I, That's I try good. to. Well, look at you, Tom, look at you. Look at everything you've accomplished, my friend. It's been a lot of fun having you on Happy Hour, bro. This has been a blast. We definitely got to do it again. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Ryan Happy Radio.com. And like that, he's gone. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. I'll kick you in the nuts, and we'll call it a day. Happy hour is now over. <laughs> Happy hour is now over. <laughs>